Hello, everyone. My name is Lars Farnum, and I am Senior Application Engineer at LMI Technologies. Based in our test laboratory in Munich, I support customers in the planning and implementation of 3D and test applications. This includes detailed feasibility studies, technical support, and assistance with application development. I personally also train customers in the correct use of the various 3D scanning methods and the operation and programming of our GoPixel software. Edge detection in image processing plays an important role. It helps us to identify objects with sharp intensity or height information changes. And they have a lot of advantages uh, compared to some other algorithms like blob tools. So let's have a look uh, to these typical features th that they offer to us. Edge detection tools give us a precise object detection. So the coordinates could be even subpixel accurate and they can work on intensity or on height information. So they have a great robustness also against noise. So we can also find edges in some blurry images or when the image information is getting brighter or darker, these tools can also work. And they even can detect incomplete structures. So we will see that later in our video. I will put the part partly outside or put some interfering contour stuff on top of it. And hopefully we will still see the object. So they will detect also parts with any orientation. That means the part can be oriented by 360 degrees and we will still find it. And it cannot only find one part as we can see here on this battery block. So we can also imagine that we find all of these battery cells with one single tool. Let's see how we did this with our algorithm in LMI software. So GoPixel also gives you the surface pattern matching tool and uh, also there we can train on intensity images or we can also train there on 3D height data. On the picture on the right side, we did a training on height information, but we can also use the intensity information. All our sensors will give you an intensity image and we can switch that algorithm also to use uh, in intensity information. So it's, it's quite easy trainable. We will see in the next step live how I will do this. It's just drag a drop uh, array around the object and then do the training. And it reports us X, Y offsets and Z rotation. And the parts even can have a variable scale. So they can be even larger or smaller. A very, very cool feature is that we can find multiple objects but then also can use them together with our new functionality, the so-called array batching. And what that is, stay tuned, you will see later in my live demonstration. Let's start to set up the pattern matching algorithm. But before we do this, let's start here to capture the background and see how it looks like. So let's do a single snap and capture the surface. In this case, we can easily see that our object background is not really perfectly flat. We see some defects and also here a little tilt. It's easy to see also when you look at the color scale. So we do first an alignment of the whole scene and this can be done in the alignment dialog. And let's step through this wizard. We press here the button alignment. First we save the old scenario and now we can start with the alignment procedure. Let's start here with an alignment with a stationary type and just with a simple flat surface. Let's go. A new image is captured and processed by this dialog. And afterwards we see some transformation results. So now the background is leveled to zero. So now we have a C offset of roughly 11 millimeters and also some angle corrections were done. Let's capture a new image and see how it looks like now. Here we are, nice and clean image. Now we scan our first part. Once again, we press the acquisition button and here we see the first object. It's always nice to capture also maybe some 
surface intensity data. This can be enabled here in this menu. And it's also worth to look there how image quality is looking like. And we even see here on this round structures, maybe uh, yeah, we have a strong light, light fall off and will not be able to capture all these rounded contours. But yeah, with the help of some multi-exposure settings, we get there more information. Let's do a bit of scaling now, a color scaling. We see the background is leveled to the zero level. And maybe we do there a manual range. So we only show object information from height level 30 to 50. And here we are. Here we see our object a little bit better than before. Now let's record some of these images. Then we can just simply work offline when we go into replay mode. Okay, let's do a first shot, modify a little bit the part position, do another capture and one more. And uh, now I even do a 180 degree rotation and let's see how that will be in the image. And afterwards, maybe we can also put a second part on the table and even a third one and I also change again the orientation of the part. So, and the last can again with some new orientations. So we captured at all a sequence of seven images and now we will work offline with these. We enable now for this the replay protection. You will find the button here in the top right corner. Let's do it now. You see, Instantly here, a blue frame around the image that indicates that we are working now in replay mode. And here we see the buffer with our seven images. Let's go to the first one. And now we can think about training this object information. Let's do now a nice and clean training. And we can instantly train on this image. But I show you now a little trick how you can maybe also improve your training data. And this would be the use of a mask, for example. With the help of a mask, you can crop the image with multi-regions in X and Y direction. Or in my case, I want to remove the background. And this can be done by a filter. And in the search word, we search here for the filter. And it's a surface image, so we use the surface filter there. And uh, here we have the list. And you see we have also here just some classic filter algorithms, but when you enable show advanced filter, the list is getting longer and here which was the option relative threshold. And remember after calibration, the background is just leveled to the zero. And so for this, we can set, for example, a low threshold, maybe of 25 millimeters and a high threshold of 45 millimeters. And now let's have a look to this image. And yeah, we can instantly see how the background is removed and maybe this makes the training easier for us in the following steps and you can maybe also better see the results. Now we do the training. I already searched here for the pattern matching algorithm. With a double click I add it to the tool chain and it automatically uses the last image. So we can train here on the full image coming from the sensor but in this case, we use only the image that is sent to us uh, from the filter tool. Don't train here in this 3D perspective. Always change here to the surface top projection. This enables you an uh, easy way to set up the arrow eye. I would also switch here to the monochrome style and then also zoom in. This is very important when you want to precisely put the tool shape in the right position. Zoom in, place the tool, and maybe even there uh, we can see some structures that we maybe don't want to train. Now let's do the training. Here in the region we have here the section pattern. And you see the list is empty, so no model is in the list. And we simply change that uh, to the create level. And now we see here instantly in the image the vector. One pattern is here in the list. 
and now we see the center only, but we can also use other viewing angles. As you can see, there is also some clutter and maybe let's remove it in a second step. Now check how our tool works. So we can enlarge the search region or we can just disable it and search on the full image. Let's step through this sequence of images. And you see, this is all found in the image with any orientation. But what happened now? Yeah, we have two objects in the image and only one is reported. What's going on there? See here, the instant count is still set to one and I just increased that number maybe to the count of six and instantly also a second one is found and reported. We can enable also the other outputs here. Let's report now the X, Y coordinates and also the C angle. And now you can also see this information here is array information. And there we get the coordinates for both objects. Let's step through the sequence and you see also the third part is also found in the image as suspected. And now let's capture some more images. For this, I disable the replay functionality, press the record button, and now I put a pen on top of one part and let's capture a new image and see what is happening there. And you see the pen is still found in the image. Yeah, so it's a little bit here, a black shadow on top of it. And let's try also when some part information is missing. I moved one part for, uh, far outside and uh, hopefully it's still detected. It depends on the match quality. You see now the match quality of this object is reduced, so they both fall down to approximately a match quality of 70. And you can control this with the minimum match quality. So if the part is more far out, yeah, you have to reduce the match quality. But be careful, very low match qualities can also find some weird background information structures and not the part itself. So we recommend you to use here higher scores. If I would set this value up to 80, we instantly would see that only one single object is still detected and the other ones are rejected. My personal recommendation for you is not to lower the matching score, but increase the quality of the training. So just set the array to a nice position where you don't have so much clutter in the background. Train dominant structures, relevant structures, not maybe only parallel lines. And also afterwards, maybe use the surface pattern editor. They are part of our Go tools. And there you can start the surface pattern editor and you can modify and optimize the trained patterns with the help of this tool. You can import from the PC instance your patterns or directly from the sensor. And you can completely retrain there. You can crop the regions. And this is also the, the way to delete clutter. And afterwards you upload the data back to GoPixel. Let's do now in the last step the so-called array batching. So you saw I was working here with a dynamic number of objects and this causes typically many problems when you program applications. So do I need one tool, two or three or even 10? So there is an answer for it in GoPixel for you. That's quite cool. You see, we have here this array output now in our tool and uh, it's enabled or, uh, already for you and all the tools results are reported already as an array variable. And this is very important when we want to do the next step. So next, I would also here now maybe disable this markings uh, so that we only focus on the new pure information. And uh, the tool we want to use now is the surface section. So we can work with this tool on the full image. But uh, 
here we see a little bit better the pen. Yeah? Uh, or we can also work here on this filtered surface. So this is maybe also a nice possibility. And let's jump back to uh, maybe a picture where we have no pen in the image. This is the surface section. And here we do a profile cut here in the image. You see that's the region. Normally you place it somewhere. You set the rotation, maybe here 12 degrees. And uh, then you get a profile cut on this object. And now let's do this dynamic. Let's go back to the front, to the top perspective. And here we enable the batching mode. So we set here now an anchor reference. We use the X, the Y information and the Z rotation. And you see already something is happening here. Maybe the part has moved somewhere outside, but you can simply center it again. Oh, in this case, uh, we have to add again the rotation. Okay, let's set the size. Maybe inspect here this small region. And you see already uh, when I move this arrow eye, when I change the size, it's applied to all of these other tools. And this is a very, very, very powerful functionality that avoids complicated tool chains. You just only draw a single tool and the other ones are dynamically replicated. So here we have tools, this positions three, here we have two, or here we even have only a single tool. So a very powerful functionality that is very useful for search algorithms like the pattern matching algorithm. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to learn more about our products, please visit our webpage at lmi3d.com. In the Discover section, you will also find the training center and the latest online and classroom training courses. See you soon. Bye-bye, says Lars Formum from LMI Technologies.